Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today. In the last class, I have completed the upper limb completely. So now I would like to start with lower limb. If you feel I have left some topics of upper limb, then please comment it in the comment section. I'll try to upload it, upload them again. So right now, I would like to deal with the pelvic fractures. Okay. What is pelvic fractures? That is the fractures which are involving any part of the pelvis. Maybe pubis, maybe iliac bone or maybe ischial bone. So, now the pelvic fractures are divided into mainly three types of fractures where they are called as type A, type B and type C. In type A, they are stable fractures. And they are, what about the displacement? Displacement is minimal. Okay. Pelvic fractures type A, they are stable fractures and they are minimally displaced. In type T, in type B, they are unstable fractures and they are displaced for sure. But what is their displacement? The dis they are displaced, but they are rotationally and vertically stable. They are just displaced, but they are rotationally and vertically stable. In type C, they are unstable and they are also unstable rotationally and vertically also. That is the main difference. So there are three types of pelvic fractures. Type A, type B and type C. In type A, they are stable and also minimally displaced. In type B, they are unstable, rotationally and vertically stable. In type C, they are unstable and rotationally and vertically also unstable. So, in type A, the pelvic ring is stable. Here, the pelvic ring which is there, that is stable. Okay. Here, there is disruption of the pelvic, uh, sorry, pubic symphysis. So, if you see, uh, sorry, this is the sacrum. This is the pubic symphysis. Okay. So, here, there is open book injury where there is disruption of pubic symphysis. There is an open ring injury and there is disruption of this pubic symphysis. So this is called as open book injury. It is something like a book. This will open up the pelvis because the pubic symphysis will provide stability to the pelvis. But whenever the pubic symphysis is uh, disrupted, this will open up the pelvis. And in type C, it is rotationally and vertically unstable. So now... Let us see the divisions of these different types of fractures in each of them. So, in type A, first let us start with type A. Type A, yeah, in type A, if you see, just a minute, just one minute. Okay, in type A, it is the most common type among the pubic, uh, among the um, among all the <coughs> pelvic fractures. Type A is the most common type, and it is also least least serious. Why? Because it is a stable. Here, the pelvis is stable. As a result, it is the most common and least serious type. Now, the first type of this is ischio pubic rami fracture. So if you see the here the fracture is in the ischio pubic rami. So if this is the pubic symphysis. This is ischio pubic rami fracture. So this is the one. So this is ischio pubic rami fracture, which is the most common fracture. This is the ischial bone. This is the pubis. Here, this rami is called as ischio pubic rami fracture. Whenever there is fracture here, that is ischio pubic rami fracture. This is also called as straddle fracture. Here, there is minimal displacement. Here there is minimal displacement and the fracture of the rami which is there that will extend into the acetabulum. 
there will be acetabulum here it will extend into the acetabulum also okay now for the clinical features the patient comes to us with the pain tenderness over the fracture site sometimes it may be asymptomatic then how are you going to uh, diagnose it clinically there is a test which is which can be done which is called as pelvic compression test clinically there is a test which is called as pelvic compression test where you uh, if this is the body you will use uh, your hands to compress the anterior superior iliac spine and the iliac ischial fossa and then you will you will just compress it like that then it should not give away okay that is pelvic compression test then how are you going to diagnose it diagnosis is by x-ray uh, and with the x-ray we will rule out the other associated fractures also how are you going to treat this ischiopubic ramae fracture treatment you will have to try to achieve it, it easily achieves union so as a result you'll have to ask the person to bed rest and you'll have to give NSAIDs for pain relief okay so this is about ischiopubic ramae fracture about pelvic compression test i help make a lecture so that it becomes easier the second test which is called which say the second uh, in type a the second type is um, iliac wing fracture okay so here the fracture is in the iliac wings here the fracture is somewhere here okay whenever there is fracture in the iliac wings uh, wing of the ilium then uh, that is iliac wing fracture here there are blood vessels as a result um, there is increased blood loss here whenever there is blood loss in this iliac wing fracture this can lead to hypovolemic shock so don't forget about the hypovolemic shock which is associated with this iliac wing fracture okay the next type of fracture which i would like to discuss here is called as acetabular fractures so if you see the what is acetabulum the head of the femur this is the greater tubercle this is the lesser tubercle this will articulate with the acetabulum okay something like this it will articulate with the um, head of the humerus so this is acetabulum whenever there is fracture here in the acetabulum that is called as acetabular fracture uh, mostly the complications are very less in acetabular fracture but there is a because the fracture is in the acetabulum so this can cause osteoarthritis arthritis of this hip joint osteoarthritis of hip because if this fracture is not treated then there is formation of fibrous thing and uh, there is infection causing osteoarthritis of hip so that is one thing which is important to remember now the fourth type of type a fracture is avulsion avulsion fracture of anterior in fact uh, sorry anterior um, inferior iliac spine so as we know there is an anterior superior iliac spine and anterior inferior iliac spine so anti avulsion fracture of anterior inferior iliac spine so here there is an anterior superior iliac spine here and there is also an anterior inferior iliac spine i don't have uh, the book okay uh, there is an anterior inferior iliac spine also so whenever there is this ant to this anterior inferior iliac spine somewhere here the uh, rectus femoris muscle that will attach to this anterior inferior iliac spine so whenever there is uh, violent contraction of this rectus muscle that will cause the disruption of this anterior oh i'm sorry uh, the rect I'll explain this in my next class. I'll just look into it and then explain it in my next class. Thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.